you everybody for coming to the Aaron Torres podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen, go ahead, click that subscribe button really does help our channel grow our audience grow. And I really do appreciate it more than, you know, so click that subscribe button, appreciate your support. Now here's the video that you came here for get to the latest twist in this Michigan football sign stealing story. So this story is crazy, okay? And, and, and so it's wild because every single time I talk about it, uh, you know, some people, oh, Torres, you talk about this too much. But it just feels like this is crazy. Every single day there is a new twist to this story, although maybe that's by design. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, but but the story is insane, right? Starts a couple days before Michigan plays Michigan State. Then we get reports of, of Connor Stallions buying tickets to Big Ten games, buying tickets to potential college football playoff opponents. We have the TCU twist to it. We have the Big Ten getting involved this week with conference calls. And as I record here late Friday, Tony Petiti, the commissioner of the Big Ten, is on Michigan's campus talking to the president and AD at Michigan. So this story continues to take on new layers. But how about this? On a Friday night, there is another new twist that is at least worth having a conversation about here. And it comes from a Michigan Wolverines insider, a, 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 a reporter who covers that team and covers that beat, who says that family members of Ryan Day allegedly could possibly be the people behind this story getting out and this story staying out. This is crazy. This is crazy. So what I want to do is read directly from the report is from a reporter named Chris Ballas. Chris Ballas, who's covered Michigan for about 20 years now, credible guy, not just some dude with a TikTok account or whatever. Um, this is a real reporter, real sources, whatever. Here's what Chris Ballas reported on the Wolverine on um, on on Friday morning, Friday afternoon. This is a doozy. This is what he said. Several sources at Michigan and in the media tell the Wolverine.com they are gathering evidence on two private investigators they believe are behind the investigation into UM's alleged sign stealing illegal on-site scouting. The same sources also believe the two are responsible for the media leaks that have kept the story in the news for weeks. Both allegedly have ties to Ohio State head coach Ryan Day's family. Reports are working to reporters are working to put pieces together, but we know Michigan is currently in possession of documents that could link one of the alleged investigators to Day's younger brother, Timothy Day. The other they suspect. The other they suspect is linked to Day's brother, Christopher, and was also a classmate of Tim Day's in New Hampshire. One currently runs a private investigation firm in Manchester, New Hampshire, Day's hometown. This is the part that I think is important. In addition, other sources at Michigan allege that some of the evidence, specifically a spreadsheet provided to the Washington Post with analyst Connor Stallion's travel plans and budget for his operation in which he allegedly paid people to video opposing team signs, was obtained by gaining access to his computer illegally. Upon investigation, more sources indicated law enforcement has begun looking into the source of the information as a result. That is via the Wolverine.com. Want to give Chris Ballas credit. And I also want to specifically tell you exactly what was reported. No rumor, no innuendo, no Torres. You said this, but you meant that. No. According to this story, two of Ryan Day's brothers may be directly involved with the investigation and more importantly with the continued alleged leaks to the media. When I tell you this is a juicy story, boy, oh boy, oh boy, is this a juicy story. Now, I think there's a couple of things to break down here. One, first of all, it's important to know. I'm First of all, I'm not accusing anyone of anything. Okay, I'm just reading the report. But it is important to know whether the investigators are related to Ryan Day, not related to Ryan Day, whoever. It, that part does not matter relative to what Michigan is being accused of and what potential punishment could be. So an Ohio State fan rightfully is going to sit here and say, who cares where the information came from? The bottom line is Michigan either did something against NCAA rules or they did not. They should either be punished or they shouldn't. And based on the information that we believe that we have, Michigan did break NCAA rules. We can argue. Should there be speakers in head? Uh, should there be speakers in football helmets at the college level? Should it be illegal to scout your opponent in person when everyone does it at every other level other than college? I played high school football. Our high school coaches were at our opponents' games all the time. We can argue whether that should be illegal or not. 
but it currently is under the current rules. And the bottom line baseline question, fundamentally pretty straightforward is this is did Michigan break NCA bylaws? And right now, based on the information that we believe that we have, they did. That's important to note. Doesn't matter where the information came from. What I will also say from the Michigan side of things, you know, Michigan fans from day one have said something does not add up here. They've tried to figure out where it comes from, what doesn't make sense. And all I'll say is this. We'll get more information on where these leaks came from, if it has anything to do with the Day family, if it does not have anything to do with the Day family. I'm not accusing anyone of anything. What I will say, there was one sentence in that Chris Ballard's piece that I think is really important. He said, this is, this is a, a part that I think is important. He said, the same sources also believe the two are responsible, the two being the, the Day family and their associates, are responsible for the media leaks that have kept this story in the news for weeks. And what I would say from the Michigan perspective, again, we can debate, is it should it be a rule, should it not be a rule? Michigan fans have been saying for weeks, something doesn't add up here. Is the NCAA out to get Jim Harbaugh? Is there something bigger going on? Or is somebody trying to, like, like is somebody coming after Harbaugh and coming after our program? And what I will say, I work in the media, okay? Um, and I understand when somebody gives you good information, you have to run with it. But the timing of all of this, does, doesn't does it feel a little bit coordinated to everybody? I'm not saying it was. But, the you know, Chris Ballas references the continued media leaks. And that's been an argument for Michigan fans for the last 10 days is like, how come? So, so let's just think about how this story broke. The story breaks a day before they play their biggest rival, Michigan State, okay? Then it also breaks directly as they're going into their buy. So we know that Michigan is essentially going to go dark for a week. Players aren't even going to be on campus. Coaches are going to be out recruiting. Nobody's even going to be around to defend themselves. It's not like this story breaks on a Friday and then Jim Harbaugh goes to the podium Saturday after the game to talk about it, then Monday after the game to talk about it, and then Wednesday. Like, no, we knew the Harbaugh wasn't going to have any availability after the Michigan State game for another week. And it just so happened that that week is when the story breaks. And oh, by the way, that week, it was one story after another, after another, after another. Felt like if you weren't paying attention for a 6, 12-hour stretch, every single day, a new story broke. Felt like when you talked about a story at 7 p.m., at 8 p.m., a new story broke. And it really was interesting that every single night, it did feel like a new story was coming out at the same time, didn't it? First, it was the Big Ten tickets. Then it was the tickets to other schools. Then it was the Washington Post report. Then it was the associate of Connor Stallions, the undercover person that didn't want to be identified. Every single story came out at the exact same time. So from the Ohio State perspective, it doesn't change. If this is true, it doesn't change the fact that rules are broken. But I also think Michigan fans have rightly kind of questioned, like, is there something bigger going on here? Because it kind of feels like this is not just a, a typical NCAA investigation. And the NCAA didn't just happen to stumble upon this information. Which brings me, by the way, to the most important point in this, in my opinion. That was that little, you know, part at the end where, according to Chris Ballas, the access, like, like they may have illegally accessed this information. Okay. So, so here is the Chris Ballas uh, uh, thing. He says, in addition, other sources at Michigan allege that some of the evidence, specifically a spreadsheet provided to the Washington Post with analyst Connor Stallion's travel plans and budget for his operation was obtained by gaining access to com his computer illegally. That's where it gets interesting. I get hiring a private investigator. I get doing due diligence. I get all that. But imagine if somebody, and by the way, imagine if that somebody was related to Ryan Day, literally broke the law, broke the law to get this information. That, that all of a sudden, that's much bigger than an NCAA issue, right? It's one thing to be an NCAA issue. It's another thing to be a, a, a crime. It's another thing to be a, a law issue. And so that, to me, is the most interesting thing. Could somebody be in serious trouble? Could somebody be looking at jail time? Could somebody have accessed computers illegally? And what does it mean for this story? Last couple thoughts. One, for Ryan Day's perspective, I hope his family had nothing to do with this. Because even if he didn't know, or even if he knew, even if it's true, it doesn't change the fact that you know, it's not going to look very good for him if uh, it's not going to look very good for Ryan Day at all. If if his family is at least loosely involved, whether they're private investigators or not. I mean, this is a guy coming off back to back losses to Michigan. 
and you need private investigators to look into your rival because you cannot beat them. Whew, I don't know if that's a story you survive. I don't know if that, because that just, you know, all the things we've said about Ryan day, uh, you know, all the things we've said about Ohio state, what was the big thing with Lou Holtz? We're not soft. Don't call us soft. That is the definition of soft. If you have to hire a private investigator, when things are going bad, finally, lastly, I'll just say not my place to say, I don't really care. You know, there's a counterpunch coming. You know that Michigan fans, and rightfully so, if this is true, are not going to be happy. Um, I would not be want to be associated with Ohio State football because I imagine every rock will be unturned looking at this story. Crazy twist, crazy allegation, crazy report. Make sure to check out the Wolverine, that report. Want to give the credit to where it's due. Came from Chris Ballas from the Wolverine.com. Make sure to check that out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure subscribe Aaron Torres pod YouTube channel. We are talking about this Michigan story every single day, every new twist. Have a good weekend. Maybe we'll actually talk some college football come Saturday and Sunday.